Within the Western Australian horticultural family, I'd often heard of the name Alex George and how his knowledge of Australian flora was legendary. Keen to meet him, I did some digging and was surprised to find out he lives just a stone's throw from my place. Alex. Hello, Josh. Great to finally meet you. Nice to meet you too. I had no idea you lived so close. Oh, yes, this is my haven. Come in. Wow, this is a huge block, Alex. It, it's quite a nice size one for a suburban area. So I'm really keen to have a look at some of the plants you've got here. Any mm. chance of a bit of a oh, sticky yes, beach? Oh, yes, no, come down. Terrific. And have a look around. A quiet and unassuming achiever, Alex George was awarded an AM as recognition of his lifetime's work as a specialist in Australian taxonomy and botanical history. And have uh, you collected most of these yourself? It's a mixture of things that I've collected, seed or cuttings, things that I've transplanted from areas that have been cleared, and plants that I've got from nurseries. OK, and there's some quite unusual specimens around. There's yes. one here that's caught my eye. This is uh, Cyanasia spinulosa. Proteaceae, I take Proteaceae it. Proteaceae family. It's an interesting plant for me because it's one of the first two Australian plants named under our modern system of scientific lamentation. Is it really? Named in 1768 yes. uh, by a herbotanist in Holland. And is this the maximum size? I'm assuming so, next to the yes, path here. Yes, that's, that's as big as it grows, and it's a, a good one for the garden because it suckers. But does it really? So, so it'll spread slowly, but not get any taller than that. OK, very good. And how about this hakea through here? That's a stunner. What's this one? That's hakea burundong beauty, a hybrid between hakea myrtoides and hakea petiolaris. OK. It appeared spontaneously in a, an arboretum in New South Wales, but the parents are WA species. And another hakea right behind me here. I can feel oh, it because it's, it's poking right. me in the back. They're very prickly customers. <laughs> They're very spiky, one. aren't they? This one's a particular interest to me because it's one that I discovered only about 15 years ago. Is that true? And just found that it was an unknown species. Uh, growing in New Norcia, only okay. 150 kilometres from Perth. It has a lovely scent like vanilla, but one of the other interesting features is that the flowers change colour. And before they fade, they'll be pink. Probably fewer than 50 plants left in the wild. Unreal. Here's one that's a bit more readily available, Kunzia baxteriae. Great for the birds. Yes, the water birds really love this one, and the bees. It's named after William Baxter, who he collected on our south coast in the 1820s. OK, so I'm getting the feeling that you're as much into collection history as you are the taxonomy. Oh, very much so. You, you can hardly avoid getting in, interested yes. in the history of the people who collected the plants and also the people who named the plants. So what is it in particular that draws you to West Australian flora? Many things, Josh. It's the huge diversity. It's the flowers, amazing range of colour, form and, and so on. The foliage, the bark of many of the trees, huge diversity. And also the fact that so many of them are unique to the southwest of Western Australia. So we're in a very special part of the world. Here's something you don't normally see in a Perth backyard, Alex. The mighty carry. What's the story behind it? It's a plant from down south that I brought up in 1958. Cool. How and old were you back then? I was only 19 at that stage. OK. A few years ago. And I planted it here. And it's never stopped growing. It certainly hasn't. It certainly dominates the backyard, doesn't it? That's right, yes. It's something to only grow if you have a large backyard. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> This Crevillia flower is absolutely gorgeous. I believe there's a story behind it. Yes, there is, Josh. This one was named after me. And what's it called? Crevillia georgiana. And where's it from? From the dry country near Southern Cross. Narrow range? Yes, yeah, fairly rare in the wild. Very special? It is for me. You must be proud as much. Yes, I am. It's gorgeous. Well, I've basically I only planted during the winter. I always put in very small plants, even seedlings that I germinated just at the cotyledon stages, so they can get us established before the hot weather comes. And for their first summer, I water them with a little bit of PVC uh, piping that I put in the ground next to the plant. I fill that up with water two or three times a week, and after that, they're on their own. I use no fertiliser, no mulch, because that's how they grow in the wild. 
Alex's contribution to our understanding of Australian plants is immense and he's been recognised by having 10 species and two genera named after him. It's been a, a, a vocation, not just a job, but a, a vocation. And I've been always very grateful for the fact that I had a job that I loved.